Greetings all and welcome to the week six overview for our summer read 960 course. I liked this um, PowerPoint presentation uh, title slide because you are in the last big week of content for week six. Um, next week we will wrap up Skinner's box and there'll be a final exam. So you'll notice that um, next week the content is much lighter than it is this week. There won't be anything new. It'll be just finishing the book, doing one final um, assignment on um, the last chapter we'll read in Skinner's box and then a final exam that covers everything that we've learned. And so at this point, the hardest week really is this week. Um, it's the most intensive, the most work that you'll be doing, and it's really your last chance to really demonstrate um, such a good work and study ethic for um, your college courses. Um, so enjoy the content this week. We're really building up to a big finish. Okay, so first, before class, um, I want you to, um, there's an article that I want you to print and read. It's called Effects of time management practices on college grades. Um, there's a screenshot of it there. Um, I want you to read it and print it. Now, this is a scholarly article. One of the things that we haven't worked on yet is how to read those and a lot of your content area classes that you'll find in the fall and spring and future college courses will require that you are familiar with how to read a scholarly article from a scholarly publication. So I'm going to show you how to do that and we're going to use Cornell Notes to do it. And so I asked you also before class to please print at least one copy of the Cornell Notes template it's actually just a blank thing with lines and the columns already made for you. We could have used it earlier, um, but now you see it. You can also just use notebook paper. So it doesn't, I'm not going to die on that hill that your Cornell notes have to be on the template, but I found in the past that some students really like the template. Um, but again, if you want to use paper, I'm okay if you do that. But please at least print and read the effects of time management practices on college grades. It's hard. I think that you might struggle, but at least you'll come to class with questions and then I'll show you how to read it, okay? In class, we're gonna check in. We're gonna talk about Rat Park from Skinner's Box. We'll talk about a phone call, addiction is a disease. We'll go over the rhetorical analysis and then we're gonna look ahead to this week and talk about how to read a scholarly article and I'm going to use this one to do that, okay? All right, so next, here's the overview for week six. week six. Don't forget, you should be printing that green assignment sheet. It goes over everything that you have to do and tells you what your assignments are. Make sure you're printing that and keeping track. Overall, we will be reading two chapters in Skinner's Box this week, chapter four and chapter eight. We do not have a section on Teach Yourself How to Learn this week. Um, and then in the learning folder, there's figurative language, note taking, and one more look at rhetorical analysis. And that will take us through week six. Okay, so chapter four of Opening Skinner's Box is called In the Unlikely Event of a Water Landing. Um, this chapter is um, really, well, I think you'll find it really interesting. Most students really like this chapter. Um, the psychologists are at the bottom of the page, Darley and Latane. You'll see how they were viewing the events of the time and how they created a study to study human behavior. Um, it has to do with the murder of Kitty Genovese, which again, once you do your previewing chapter four work, you will know who that is and what happened to her. And so there are a couple things for your chapter four assignment. Make sure you watch the video. It'll go over the pre-reading work, the reading work, as well as the reflection that I want you to work on after. All of that instruction is in the video. Don't forget the next file in that folder is just the PowerPoint that I use to make the video. And then there's the assignment folder for your QQMS. And in that assignment folder, you will actually put all of the assignments that are described in the video. Okay, so next you're going to read chapter eight of Opening Skinner's Box. It's called Lost in the Mall. It is about memory. Um, the psychologist we're looking at in chapter eight, her name is Elizabeth Loftus. And so that's her picture there on the screen. I think it's always helpful to have that picture in your head of who you're reading about. Um, there's a little screen shot there for how memory is encoded in the brain. You're gonna have to really know that in order to understand this chapter. And so there's a video previewing chapter eight of Skinner's Box. Make sure you watch the video. Um, during the video, I will ask you to exit out of the my video and go to, you'll see it as the third thing 
in the chapter eight folder. It's called How Reliable Is Your Memory? It's by Elizabeth Loftus. It's actually her TED talk that she did. I tried to play it directly in the um, previewing chapter eight video, but then it was a copyright violation. So I had to make it separate and you have to go outside to watch it. So you'll have to click on my video link, which is the third thing in that folder in order to watch the TED Talk. All of the instructions for um, chapter eight of Skinner's Box are detailed in the video. Make sure you watch the video. There is a pre-work again. There's your QQMS. Um, and then there's a quest as well as a reflection. So it's important that you do all of those sections because they're all due in that QQMS and quest folder that you see is the fourth thing in the chapter eight subfolder. And that will take you through Skinner's box for this week. There's only one more chapter that we're going to read in the book and that will happen next week. Okay, and then we're in the learning. Um, subfolder. The first part is on figurative language. One of the things on your common course outline that we still haven't done is figurative language, also called figures of speech. Um, there are two videos. Because that lecture in a face-to-face -face class takes longer than 15 minutes, um, Screencast only allows 15 minute videos, so I had to break it into part one and part two. Part one covers most of the content, but not all of it. It's very content heavy. Part two will finish up the content and explain your assignment for you, which is called the figurative language dive. Um, and that's the assignment that's due in this subfolder. So it's important that you watch both videos. And then again, I've always given you the PowerPoint that I use to make the videos. That's the third thing in the subfolder. And then you see the assignment folder where you will upload your final assignment that again is covered in the video, okay? So figurative language is the learning part one this week. Next is part two, it's note taking. Um, you are going to read another scholarly article. This one's called The Responsive Bystander. Um, this connects directly with chapter four of Opening Skinner's Box. And you are going to print and read this article and then you're going to take notes on it. All of the directions are here. If you look at the first file in the note-taking subfolder, that is the directions for what you're supposed to be doing. Then you see Crowther and Levine article is the next thing. That's the what I've screenshotted on the right side of the slide. That's the article, you should print it. And then I've given you the Cornell Notes template. Again, you may use the template or you can just use notebook paper, it's up to you. Um, and then there's the assignment folder for where you'll put your notes when you're all done, okay? Then finally this week, learning part three is revisiting rhetorical analysis. You've had a chance to learn it, practice it. We went over it on Monday and now you get to try it again. Um, so this article is entitled Reform Eyewitness ID Process. This connects directly with chapter eight of Opening Skinner's Box. That should make sense in your head by the time you get there. And so I want you to read and print the article, follow the directions. I tell you exactly what I want you to do. Um, the directions are the first file in the subfolder, the article is second, it's a PDF document, and then I've given you the two worksheets you have to complete, both the blue sheet and the rhetorical analysis worksheet, and then I've given you the folder where you will put everything. Make sure you follow the directions because there's more to it than just those two worksheets, so you want to make sure you're following the directions. Okay, and that's all for this week. Um, next week is the last week of our summer course. We will wrap everything up. Hang in there, you're almost there. Congratulations, and I'll see you in class.